Hey everyone, this is Kamran and our topic for today is graph data structure. In the past, we have talked about the tree data structure, where we have nodes and these nodes are connected with the help of edges. We also have a root node, which is the starting point of the tree. And this is the node where we always start reading the data in the tree. Graph data structure is similar to the tree data structure in the sense that we still have the nodes, which are also called the vertices of the graph. The singular form of this is called vertex. And these vertices are connected with the help of edges. So if you look at this graph, we have seven nodes or seven vertices in this graph. Now, if we label these vertices alphabetically and we represent the vertices with V and the edges with E, the vertices of this graph would be A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And for the edges from vertex A, we have A, B, A, D, and A, E. From B, we have B, A, B, D, and B, C. And similarly, we have all these different edges from other vertices. All right, so the graph can either be directed or an undirected graph. The graph that we previously looked at was an undirected graph. In undirected graph, we have no direction tied to the edges. So if you look at this graph, we don't have any direction on any of the edges. We can travel from any node to the adjacent node and back. So if you see here, we can travel from node A to node B. And from node B, we can travel back to node A. We can travel from node A to node D and back from D to A, from A to E and then back to A. In the similar way, we can travel from any node to any adjacent node and back. Now, if you look at the edges for this undirected graph, it would be this list. So we can travel from A to B, D and E, from B to A, D and C, from C to B, D and G and so on. All right, so next we have the directed graph. In directed graph, we have direction tied to each of the edges. So if you look at this graph, we have arrows showing the edge directions. So for example, we can move from node A to node B, but we can't travel from node B back to node A. Let's look at the edges for this graph. So from A, we'll have AB. From B, we can travel to C, so we have BC. Then we have C. We can't travel from C to any other node, so we don't have any edge here. Next, we have D. From D, we'll have the edges DC, DE, and DF. From E, we have EA. And finally, we have F, from which we can't travel anywhere, so we don't have any edge. All right, let's look at some graph terminology. So first of all, we have path. A path to a node or vertex is a set of edges from starting vertex to the ending vertex. Let's say that we have this graph, and we need a path from vertex E to vertex C. So we have vertex E, then we'll travel to vertex A, then B, and then C. So the path in this case will be E, A, B, and C. Next, a path can either be closed or a simple path. A closed path is a path where the starting and the ending nodes are same. So in this case, example of a closed path will be A, B, C, and A, because starting and ending nodes are same, the A node. So we start from A, then B, then C, and finally we are back to the node A. So next we have simple path. A simple path is any path where the nodes are not repeated. Let's take this graph as an example. Now in this case, if we take the path C, A, B, C, D, this path is not going to be a simple path because the node C in this path is repeated. But if we take another path C, A, B, this is a simple path because no node in this path is repeated. All right, so next we have loop. A loop is an edge that connects a node to itself. So if you look at this example, the node B is connected to itself by this edge. So this edge will be called a loop. Next we have the degree of a node. The number of nodes connecting a node to the graph is called the degree of that node. Let's look at this undirected graph first. If you look at the node A of this graph, there are two edges connected to this node. So the degree of node A would be two. B has also two edges. So again, the degree of B will also be two. C also has two edges. So the degree of C will be two. Now, what happens if we have a loop within a node? So let's say that we have a loop on the node B here. 
When counting the number of edges, a loop is counted as two. So for example, in this case, we have two normal edges. So we'll take two for these, and then we have a loop. So we'll add another two. So two plus two is equal to four. So the degree of node B here would be four. Next, we have a directed graph. In directed graph, we have two types of degrees for each node, the in degree and the out degree. In degree means that the number of edges coming into the node, and the out degree means the number of edges going out of the node. If you look at this example, we don't have any edges coming into the node A. So the in degree of the A would be zero. But there are two edges going out of the node A. So the out degree of the A would be two. Next, we have the node B. There is one edge coming into the node, so the in degree would be one, and there is one edge going out, so the out degree would also be one. For C, we have two edges coming in, so the in degree would be two, but there are no edges going out, so the out degree would be zero. Now, what happens when we have a loop in a directed graph? So let's say that we have a loop on the node B. Now there are two edges coming into the node, one normal edge and the other is the loop. So the in degree of this node would be two. And similarly, we have two edges going out of the node, a normal one and the other one for the loop. So the out degree will also be two. All right, so next we have a cycle graph. A cycle graph is a simple graph where we have all the nodes connected to each other and the number of edges is equal to the number of nodes of the graph. So for example, if you look at these two graphs, both of these are cycle graphs because all the nodes are connected to each other and the number of nodes is equal to the number of edges. Next, we have a connected graph. A connected graph is a graph where we can visit any node from any other node. The number of edges between the two nodes doesn't really matter. What's important is to have a path between two nodes. So for example, here's an undirected graph, which is a connected graph because we can visit any node of the graph from any other node in the graph. But if we remove the edge between the node A and node D, the graph will no longer be a connected graph because we cannot visit all the nodes of the graph from any other node in the graph. This type of graph is called a disconnected graph. All right, so next we have a complete graph. A complete graph is a graph where each node of the graph is connected to every other node of the graph with exactly one edge. So here is the example of two complete graphs because all the nodes of each of the graphs are connected to every other node of the graph. All right, so next we have a weighted graph. A weighted graph is a graph where we have a value or weight assigned to an edge connecting two different nodes. So if you look at these two graphs, you can see that we have a weight written on top of each of the edge. So both of these graphs are weighted graphs. Next, we have a simple graph. A simple graph is a graph which doesn't have any loops or the parallel edges. So if you look at these two graphs, both of them are not simple graphs because one has a loop and the other has a parallel edge. If we remove the loop from the first one and the parallel edge from the second one, both of these graphs will become simple graphs. All right, so now that we know what the graph is, the different types of graphs and the terminologies, let's see how we can represent a graph programmatically. There are two ways to represent a graph, either by using the adjacency matrix or adjacency list. So first of all, we have the adjacency matrix in which we represent the graph using a two dimensional array or a hash map. Let's say that we have this graph and we need to represent this using the adjacency matrix. So we will create a two dimensional array where each dimension of the array has all the nodes of the graph. And then for each value slot, will either store one, which means yes, we do have an edge from this node to the other node, or we will store zero, which means we don't have any edge. Let's look at the node one. So the first value of the matrix is matrix of one of one. Since we don't have any edge or a loop connecting the node one to the node one, so we will put zero here. Next, we have one of two. Now we do have an edge from node one to node two, so we will put one here. Then we have one of three, Again, we do have an edge from one to three, so we will put one here. Now one of four, now we don't have any edge between one and four, so we will put zero here. And then we have one of five, again, no edge between one and five, so we will put zero here. 
All right, so now we will move to the second row, which is the node two. Now we do have an edge between two and one. So we will put one here. Two of two will be zero because we don't have any edge between two and two. Two of three will be one because we do have an edge. Two of four will be one because we do have an edge between two and four. And two of five will be zero again because we don't have any edge between two and five. Similarly, we will fill up the values for node three. So three has edges connecting it to one, two, four, and five. So these values will be one, and the others will be zero. And in the same way, we will fill up the values for the node four and the five also. And this is how the adjacency matrix works. We have both dimensions of the array representing all the nodes of the graph, and we either put zero to represent no edge between the nodes, or we put one. To represent the presence of an edge between the nodes. For a weighted graph, we still have the same matrix, but in that case, instead of one, we fill up the matrix with either the weight of the edge, or we put infinity if there is no edge between the nodes. So we don't put one and zero. For one, we put the weight of the edge, and for zero, we put the infinity, which means that there is no edge between the two nodes. All right. So next, we have the adjacency list where we use an array of linked lists. To represent the graph, so if we look at the same graph here, we'll have a one-dimensional array of nodes, where each value of the array will hold the pointer to a linked list, which will be a list of all the nodes to which the current node has an edge with. Let's fill up this array to understand what we mean. So first of all, we have the node one here. Now one has edges to the node two and three, so we'll create a linked list with the nodes two and three. And we will put the address of the list in the index one of this array. Next, we have the node two, which points to one, three, and four. So we'll create a linked list with one, three, and four, and we will put the address to that in the index two. Next, we have three, which points to nodes one, two, four, and five. So we will create a linked list with one, two, four, and five, and put the address of that in the index three. So next, we have four, which points to two, three, and five. So again, we'll create a linked list with two, three, and five, and we will put that into the index four. And finally, we have the node five, which points to three and four. So we'll put the linked list with three and four into this node. And that is how you represent a graph using adjacency list. I've given the pros and cons of representing a graph with adjacency matrix and list in the description below. So make sure to check that out as well. All right, so we finally have the use cases of the graph data structure. So they're used in the GPS systems, for example, in Google Maps to identify the shortest path between two locations. In social networks, for example, Facebook and Twitter have the social graph representing you and all your friends as nodes. Also, they're used in the search engines. For example, they're used to uh, rank the pages and the search results as well, and so on. And that is all for the graph data structure. In the future videos, we'll be covering different algorithms using the graphs and the other data structures that we have covered so far in this series. So stay tuned for those as well. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and I will see you in the next one.